بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم everyone and peace be upon you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have just left us with the Quran but he gave us a prophetic example because we as human beings no one is going to know our psychology or the way we learn better than the one who created us designed us and fashioned us right so of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best way in which we can learn lessons and live by those lessons, and it is by seeing and following an example. And that's why it's not enough for us to learn the Qur'an. We have to spend time learning the seerah and the way of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it begins inward, seeking knowledge. And that's why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim. Why? Because knowledge is truth. Knowledge guides you to the truth. Knowledge is light. Knowledge gives you clarity. It lets you see truth as truth and falsehood as falsehood. See, that knowledge is what makes a person stand firm. The more your heart is connected to truth, the less you will be swayed by what is false and what the people present to you that is not in line with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this process begins inward. So there is... Um, a thought in, you know, in psychology, there's different branches in which we approach, you know, um, struggles. So there's like psychodynamic, for example, theory. There's cognitive behavioral theory. There's a school of thought called existential psychology. And I really like this school of thought. I feel like a lot of its concepts are, are in line with Islam and what it teaches. And so within this um, school of thought, there's an emphasis on tr living truthfully. And you know, there's a concept, a phrase that they say, they say, you know, don't merely know yourself, be yourself. See, be is what? It's a verb, it's an action. Sometimes we think it's enough to just know who we are. But so, so a lot of times what we do is we, we know who we are and we fixate so much about who am I, who am I, who am I, rather than asking different questions. What are my truths? So I want to share with you three, you know, key steps that we need to take that start with, that help, you know, cultivate this inward process that will help us, inshallah, arrive at the natural result of being people who walk this earth firm, who walk this earth grounded, who walk this earth connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who walk this earth prioritizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feeling honored because of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feeling enough because of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is what's being, you know, we're robbing ourselves from every day in this world. And this society is promoting this. Doesn't want us to feel enough through our Creator. Doesn't want our youth to feel enough to be Muslim, to be people who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is going to be our struggle till the end of time. And so, the first step I want you to take is to ask different questions. So we're no longer going to ask, how do I strengthen, you know, my Muslim identity? Or how do I present a strong Muslim identity? I want us to turn inward and ask the deeper questions. Do I know what my truths are? How many of us have sat down and reconnected with our truths, our beliefs? You know, what we believe about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we believe about the path that He ordained for us, what we believe about what He has taught us, what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. So we begin by asking, do I even know what my truths are? When was the last time that I actually sought, you know, knowledge? And not just like feel good knowledge, you know, watch a YouTube lecture and feel good and move on. I'm talking about sitting with the discomfort of seeking knowledge. Because seeking knowledge is not always, I feel that high and then I feel good and I move on. Seeking knowledge, being a truth seeker, a seeker of knowledge is you sit with the knowledge. You take a little bit of time, you sit with it, you let it, you let it seep into your heart. You don't just, you're not satisfied with it just being on a mental level. So you ask different questions. Do I know what my truths are? And then what do I claim to be true? You know, remember, identity is made up of your beliefs. Like, okay, I, I'm claiming things, right? We are, we're always claiming things. In fact, the testimonial itself, the shahada, is a claim, isn't it? So what is a testimonial? You're testifying to what? To truth. You're testifying to a truth you claim to believe. So what do you claim to be true? When you say, I am Muslim, what are you claiming to be true? 
What does that mean to you? And then I want you to ask, you know, I want you as you explore your inner truths, maybe some of these truths come up that maybe are not in line with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to ask yourself, are these truths in line with God? You see, we live in a world that teaches, you know, a lot of these self-help empowering concepts, but they make who the destination? Allah or ourselves? Ourselves. And this is something, a struggle of mine that I found along this path of navigating Islamic psychology was that when I would be immersed in the Western world, it, a lot of times the self-help material pointed to making the self the destination. The self was the master. But in Islam, that's not the case. So now, but this is causing problems even in the Muslim community because now a lot of the times what I hear is, okay, it's true to me, that's enough. No, you claim to be Muslim. That was your claim. You took the shahada. You testify to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being your Lord and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being his prophet and messenger. So it's not enough for you to say that this is my truth and that's it. As Muslims, based on our claim, based on our beliefs, there's an additional step, which is, okay, this is what's real for me internally. I might not want to wear hijab, I might not want to do this, I might not want to do that. Okay, but is it in line with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's not enough, I can't just rest and say, okay, this is my truth, and that's it, and that's okay. Because I am not the master of myself. And so, so we have to always do that additional check-in. Are these truths in line with Allah? It's okay to realize what, you're not, what your truths are. We're human. It, this, there's no, this see, what I, what I hope to encourage myself and, and, and everyone always of is that I would like for us to practice less perfection and more authenticity. Less perfection and more wholeness. Perfection is not even real. It's not, we're never going to be perfect. But the key is to be aware of the reality of your inner experience so that you can direct it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and align it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what we're asked to do. We're not asked to be perfect, but we're asked to react to our imperfection in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we find out about God's truths. Another question we should ask is, are God's truths enough for my heart? Is God enough for my heart? Is God seeing me right now enough for my heart? Is God being pleased with me right now enough for my heart? Or do I still need the validation of other people? Is me speaking the truth about my beliefs enough in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or no, wait, what are the people going to say? See, this is a muscle. You know, when I, te I teach this in a lot of my courses and programs, and I always say it's a muscle you have to build. It's not something that just comes, you know? It's something you have to build. The muscle of prioritizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and letting that be enough. Letting what be enough? His validation of you. His acceptance of you. Him being pleased with you. Is that enough? Or will you continue to feel like you need other people's approval? You need the society's approval? You need society to tell, to say that, oh no, Muslims are okay. Muslims are accepted. What are, you, what do you need? Ask yourself these deeper questions. What are you looking for? What do you hope people will validate within you that you can get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So is God enough for your heart? And if he's not enough for your heart today in this moment as you're asking yourself this, I want you to begin asking yourself, how can I, what can I do to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for me in my heart? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us the supplication of the people who came, the righteous people who came before us who said, Hasbunallahu wa na'mal wakil, right? God is sufficient for us. And he is the best disposer of all affairs. God is, in other translations, God is enough for us, sufficient. Same, same concept, right? Can God be enough in your heart? And then two more questions I want you to ask. How can I live by these truths each day so what I do is consistent with what I say I believe? Don't have to take big steps. You could start with, okay, I believe that Salah is important. I'm going to make sure that I am consistent with what I say I believe. Start with the basics and work your way up. This is what bring, this is what contributes to wholeness. 
This is what contributes to authenticity, which is very much related to wholeness. Because what's the opposite of authenticity? Hypocrisy. And isn't it interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always warns us in the Qur'an about hypocrisy. But see, the thing is, I think that a lot of times we're so programmed to look at things as that's deen, that's spirituality, right? That's here. And then my mental and emotional wellness here, and then my life is over here, and my career is over here. And I, and I always say that I think one of the biggest things that contributes to people's struggles is this living in compartments. Where we have not com you know, connected the areas of our lives through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the oneness of Allah. And this is the essence of Tawheed, is that all the areas of your life come together and are connected through the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.